Hello everyone, um, we're back today uh, walking you guys through the procedure for the acetylation of aniline. Um, so let me show you what I've done so far. Um, all I have done so far is I have taken three milliliters of water and added it to this little round bottom flask here. And I've added in a milliliter of aniline, which you can see here. And the aniline, uh, it's supposed to be clear but in reality, this stuff oxidizes in air very quickly, and it takes on a brown color as it does this. Um, we're gonna clear out some impurities later that are caused by this oxidation, uh, but for right now, uh, the purity of this aniline is just fine for this reaction. Um, anyway, so I've got water, I've got aniline. Let's go ahead and start stirring this nice and fast. When in doubt, I always stir as hard as I can without splashing. Um, so to this reaction, we are going to add 1.4 milliliters of acetic anhydride. And this is another species which reacts quickly with air or anything with a polar moment uh, and ends up adding an acetyl group uh, to that positive center that's present um, on the water in the air, or today in case, uh, in this case, the aniline. Um, so because this is rather reactive, it's important that we drip it in slowly. So I'm gonna stabilize the plunger of this syringe with my fingers and just give my thumb a lot of resistance so that I really need to push and get a nice slow addition of acetic anhydride. Now, as I do this over the next minute or so, you may see a change in the color and appearance of the system. Sometimes when we do this reaction, uh, the acetylated aniline crystallizes rather quickly. Other times it happens uh, over the five minute reaction period after all this is added. We'll see what happens. Alrighty. So I just separated that 1.4 mils of acetic anhydride into two syringes because I did not have a two mil syringe. Um, that we're actually getting some fogginess on the round bottom flask here. Uh, the reason that we're adding the acetic anhydride slowly is because this is an exothermic reaction. And this reaction is actually getting quite warm to the touch as I go. Oh, there we go. We crystallized. We've got what looks like a... Uh, dirty slurpy consistency right now. And that's about the end of our acetic anhydride. Yeah, that crystallization really happened uh, all at once. That's nice. Um, so after we've added all of our acetic anhydride, we are going to stop the stirring and just let it stand for a few more minutes. Um, I can tell from the solid that's already appeared here, uh, that the reaction has mostly already gone to completion, but we want to get a nice high yield, so we're going to let this stand and finish itself off um, and come back after a few minutes to show you the workup uh, where we're gonna collect this crude product, and then we are actually going to recrystallize it to remove some of the impurities introduced by this old aniline. Okay, so five minutes have passed since the acetic anhydride was done. 
being added. And we have our chunky off uh, white kind of tan colored solid here. Um, we're gonna collect that by Buchner funnel. So I'm gonna turn on this really loud vacuum. Perfect. So I'm gonna wet down that paper with a bit of uh, ice water. Because this is a really non-polar product, we can use it, or we can use water to wash off any impurities at this stage. I'm just throwing the syrup bar in there for now. Once it's a dry powder, it'll be much easier to remove. So I'm gonna use ice water to collect a bunch of the other crystals stuck inside the flask. I want that. Okay, that's pretty clean. right now, so it's going to take a little bit of drying time, but what I'm doing, I, I mercilessly bent the spatula to a little 90 degree angle, so I can just press it down into the paper, and that squeezes out a little bit of the liquid to start, and it also gives me a nice wide surface area in here where everything's being dried in a thin layer, and that's the fastest way to dry out are solid. So maybe you can see this tan solid that we've got right now. Uh, after that recrystallization, I expect that the acetylenide that we're making is going to be a nice bright white. Okay, I've got this nice and spread out. Uh, I'm going to cut for now, and I'm going to come back in a few minutes once this is dried. Okay, so let's see how our dry powder looks. We got this nice tan uh, crude powder of acetylenide now. Um, it looks pretty impure, but we're gonna work on that right now by recrystallizing it in water. Now, I mentioned earlier that this compound is very insoluble in cold water. Um, we are going to use boiling water, which is going to barely dissolve it completely and then we are going to cool it down slowly in order to give the acetylenide enough time to form very pure crystals and exclude out all of the impurities in solution. Um, so I have 1.4 uh, grams of impure acetylenide right here and using the conversion which is available in your procedures, I know that I need something in the neighborhood of like 25 or 30 mils of water in order to perfectly dissolve all of this acetylenide once it's boiling. Um, I'm actually gonna start with 20 mils of water and see if I can get away with that because the less solvent I use, uh, the higher my yield will be after recrystallization. So, there's 10 mils of water, and 20. I'm not even going to worry about stirring this until it comes to a boil. This is not going to dissolve until we are at a full rolling boil of water. And so I've got a hot plate here set to about 350 degrees Celsius. And uh, let's go ahead and wait a minute until we're at a reflux and I can see little drops of water collecting on the sides of the flask. Okay, we're back. 
and uh, so this is 20 mils of water, like I said, um, and it's actually completely dissolved all of my impure acetylenide, and that's great. Um, so check this out. Look at this sweet brown blob that is collected at the bottom of this flask. So what this is, is the oxidized aniline. Um, it, that oxidized uh, aniline didn't react with the acetic anhydride, um, and so it just made it through the reaction process up to this point. And this is what was tinting our product brown. Uh, what's really nice is that uh, this is non-polar enough that it doesn't dissolve in this really hot boiling water and so I can just yank this uh, brown blob of liquid out with a pipette. Let's see if I can do this really gently without busting it. Oh, shoot. Okay, let's try that again. Um, but we're not going to be fancy. I'm going to stabilize myself properly here. Put down the camera. Ta-da! And so I was able to remove that brown substance pretty effectively from the bottom of that. Um, the white stuff in the rest of this pipette here, that's product that I'm going to lose, but uh, by removing this brown compound, uh, that's really going to improve the purity. Okay, so now our acetylenide is uh, perfectly dissolved in this boiling water, and I'm going to remove it from heat and put it up in a clamp. Make sure that's nice and secure because that would suck if it dropped. Okay, turn that heat off. Now, Water takes a super long time to cool because it has a super high specific heat. So this is gonna take maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Um, but I'm gonna check back with you guys and show you the crystals that will form as the reaction cools down. Okay, let's get back to our acetylenide that has been uh, cooling at room temp for about 20 minutes, and then I put it in a little ice water bath for another 10 minutes. And a bunch of solid has formed, and we can tell the recrystallization worked, because I tried to fish out a few crystals with my spatula here. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus on it. Dang, I might have to be struggling with this a little bit, sorry. Well, what I'm trying to show you guys are these pointy feathered crystals that have structure and shape and are actually shiny. And shiny crystals are good for recrystallizations uh, because that means that you have smooth planes of crystals that have formed, and it's very likely that you've given the crystals enough time to properly form up on themselves, and the purity is likely of high, you likely have a high purity product. Anyway, I'll see if I can show you guys some pretty crystals here in a minute. Um, let's go ahead and collect these by Buker Funnel. So, a little bit of ice water, that'll stick the filter paper down, but it won't dissolve our acetylenide crystals. So, they're plastered on the inside of here as well, so I'm going to try to scrape these off. And then I'm going to use a little bit of ice water to flush them out. Let's 
so you can maybe see the shininess of our crystalline solid that we have here. Very sorry for the focus issues. But we've got a big collection of shiny, flat, beautiful crystals here, which indicates that the purity of our compound has increased. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to smash them to a fine powder, which is a really sad feeling. But by doing that, you're gonna increase the surface area of your solid, and that is gonna to lead to a much faster drying process. So I'm gonna crush them up finely, and I'm gonna try my best to spread them out into a thin layer all the way across the surface of this filter paper because that means that the most air is going to be sucked through this solid and these are going to dry faster. Okay, so now that I've crushed those up, um, those are going to continue drying probably for the next 20 minutes. Um, and uh, then once these crystals are so dry that I can pick them up and they don't stick to my spatula at all, I'll know that they're dry and I can go ahead and collect IR, melting point, and mass data for you guys to analyze. Uh, so thank you very much for watching and I'm going to leave it up to you from here.